Hey everyone, Rajan here and what I have here is probably one of the more unique keyboards that I have put my hands on in the last year or so. This is the Vintage 60S by G Square Studio and it is currently on interest check. ClickClack.io is the international vendor for this group buy. Links to the interest check and the ClickClack Discord will be on the description for more information. The headline feature for this keyboard is that it basically has three modes that changes the sound of the board. The first is solenoid. It also has a buzzer mode. And normal mode. From what I know, these are features that keyboards back in the day used to have to provide feedback when typing. This definitely has a target audience as I've seen a couple of boards recently that had this feature as well. At first, I thought this was more of a gimmick more than anything but I have to say, I have been using the buzzer quite a lot since I've gotten this board and I've gotten to like it. Outside of the novelty of the buzzer and the solenoid, I do think that the Vintage 60S is a good keyboard on its own. First of all, this is a very heavy keyboard. When built, the keyboard weighs around 3.1 kilograms. Typing on heavy keyboards just feels more premium in my opinion, so I like how this is built like a tank. The shape of the case may remind some of the cyberboard, but I think the Vintage 60 is quite different. The keys are sunken, making the typing angle low and comfortable. In the front is this PVD decoration bar that reflects the keys when you are typing which I think is a really nice touch. USB socket is on the left side and on the right you get a badge. At the back is a PVD weight as well. I got the regular version so the top and sides are a bit plain. I definitely recommend getting the special edition so you would get a bit more flair on the case. Overall finish on the board has been generally good. However, my unit which had the red coating had a bit of a flaw on the left side of the board. Very minimal but I did raise it to click clack and they said that this should be caught during the quality control on the actual run. Construction of the keyboard is actually relatively simple. You have a top and bottom case connected by screws at the bottom. The intimidating part are the various JST connectors but it is actually quite easy to connect and the PCB is adequately marked so you won't make mistakes. This is a top mount keyboard with gaskets that you put in between the plate before you screw the plate to the case. That and the flex cuts on both the PCB and the plate make for a soft typing experience. I believe the group by runners are thinking of having the option of non-flex cut plates and PCBs and I would definitely prefer that since I prefer typing on stiffer plates. This is how you connect the cables internally. You connect the top and the bottom modules of the solenoid with the black cable. Then you connect the three multicolored cables from the daughter board, solenoid, and buzzer to the PCB. It is properly labeled on the PCB so it should not be an issue putting this together. And this is the built Vintage 60S. The name is actually a bit of a misnomer since the board comes with a 75% layout by default. But you can purchase add-ons to make it a 65% layout, though I don't have that add-on on this package. 
Switches are the Dark Warrior switches from G Square as well, which are surprisingly good stock. These were factory lubed, and the batch that I got sounded really great. No spring ping, and it sounds really clacky. These are long pole tactiles with a moderate bump, and I really liked it. I also used the G Square Studio stabs out of the box without balancing it, and I didn't have any issues with rattle. Overall, I am impressed with the G Square keyboard accessories that I got. As for the Vintage 60S, overall, I really like this keyboard. It is hefty, the design is very unique, and you get a really good typing experience. As most large keyboards do, it draws attention when it is on your desk, and it is a good fit on my current setup. I would definitely have gotten the Special Edition since I like its design better, but that will be up to personal preference. And that is it for this video. I'll leave you with a full sound test, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!